Okay, kids, well, it's pretty old and it's pretty dusty. And I don't know much about it. It's 200 base series PV Century amplifier. Um, we got a rusty corner and we got a lot of dirt. But rumor has it this actually works. Um, I have a nice Fender 215 speaker cab down there for it. But uh, we're not going to plug it into that speaker cabinet because I don't trust it yet. So we're going to plug it into a sacrificial speaker just in case it decides to blow something up. But rumor has it it actually works. So if it does, yay, less work for me. Let's plug it into the electricity and see if it explodes. It'll probably wait till we turn the power on, right? All right, here goes nothing. Actually, let's do something smarter. Before we do that, let's look at our fuse and see what kind of fuse we have. Let's not be stupid here. Let's hold it under my light. Maybe I can tell. Five amp fuse. Five amp fuse. That seems a little on the big side. What does this say it wants? Does it tell us? Yes, it specifically says 5 amp fuse on it, so... Okay, nothing to fear. And here goes nothing. It has got a three-prong three, three cord on it, too. That makes me feel better. Okay, so we're on. We have a master gain. I turn that. I can hear a little crackles in the speaker. So that's fine. And then here's a regular gain. Oh yeah. I love this. We have a distortion circuit. That Some kind of maybe a fuzz into it or something. Well, other than a couple of slightly dirty controls, it looks like our amp works. But of course, this is my channel, and we're going to take it apart, and we're going to clean it, and we're going to try to make it look like a jillion bucks. But at least this project's off to a good start. There are a few, there's a couple more projects in the can that don't look as promising as this. Um, this one, though, like I say, that's the first time I've turned it on. Let's see, does input number two work? That's kind of a rustier looking jack. Yeah. Input 2 works also. We'll probably be cleaning those jacks. Cool. So, yeah, it's alive. Um, if you don't know much about these PV amps, the plate on the back, the 200 series, it was like the same power amp, and they put it on monitor amps and PA amps and everything else, and then they could just change the front plate to the base model or the PA model or whatever with the appropriate inputs and tone controls. But, uh, okay, so step two, take it up, take the front and back off and give it a bath. When you take these apart, you're always kind of surprised at how this is really just a square box with a preamp on the front and a power amp on the back. And I don't think those screws have ever been out of there. Let's see, we've got to find a good place to put them so we won't lose them. Right there, that's a good place to lose them. All right, our preamp board should come out of there. Surprise, this one's plastic. I've had some of them that were... Maybe that's not plastic. Maybe that's aluminum. Feels plastic to me. What do we got? We're sticking. Why are you sticking? The corner, the corner protector things are causing it to hook on and stick, so... And there you have it. So, a preamp board, a bunch of empty space, 
and a power amp in the back. And that looks suspiciously good. Cool. I think this is just going to be up for a bath. Okay, so this is like the job I do on every amplifier that we can never film because there's never any room to get a camera in there. But since the faceplate of this PV base amp comes off, we can see the pots brightly and easily right back here. So there's where the three legs go in. And essentially there's usually an air gap there, which there is in this case, and it's just a matter of taking your electronics lubricant cleaner stuff, putting a little puff in there, and then grabbing the pot on the other side and turning it back and forth a lot of times. You'll actually feel it get way looser and then you rinse and repeat and do that for all six potentiometers. This is tough. Okay, so at this point I'm pretty happy. Um, it got a bath, it got the pots cleaned, everything got a good visual inspection, and it's got a brief little test here. We're going to listen to it and find out how it sounds together. I've got it plugged into a 215 Fender cab down here. Um, cosmetically, the Tolex is actually in pretty darn good shape. Um, you know, that was all happy and great, but <clears throat> However this was put down, I guess they kind of set it down on its side, maybe stored it on its side, but two of the corner bumpers had absolutely just turned to rust and disintegrated. So I don't know if you noticed it, but there are two replacement corner bumpers. They're, they're generic ones, but they don't look, I mean, you don't, you don't really, you know, they don't scream, this, this doesn't match, right? Um, I don't think so anyway. So, time to go get a base and hear what it sounds okay, like. Okay, so everything's going good. This thing had a couple minutes to cook just at idle. Uh, it's nice and quiet. The buzz that you hear is because I decided to use a Rickenbacker in a room with fluorescent lights. But uh, we've got the base, uh, we've got treble and middle uh, at the 12 o'clock position, and we've got the base uh, oh, turned up an extra two. So, I guess if it's a 1 of 10 scale, it's about at 7.5. Um, gain at uh, 30 some percent, and again it's a Rickenbacker, and power at, or master gain at about 30 percent, so. I like the tone a lot. Um, obviously we have to keep the volume down for the sake of the camera. And this distortion thing is kind of like a fuzz and it's real subtle. I figured it would have been more aggressive, but I've got to really like bring it in. It's like a low rumble fuzz. That's different. Um, but yeah, all the controls are working good. Let's go back to clean here. And I'm sure that probably this distortion circuit is tied in with the gain maybe. So if I bring that up and then bring this up and bring that down. Oh yeah, that's where we get our more fuzz. A weird octavey sound to it. Crazy. That's that's different. I have never heard a bass amp with that before. But uh, all the other controls are working good. We've got you know our bass to minimum. Whoa, bass at maximum is a lot of bass. That's cool. Um, treble at minimum. at maximum for sure. Probably a little less than that. Mids, let's try mids at nothing. Cool. Alright, so it works. This 
This is a PV200 series uh, base amp called the Century. It's a 100 watt solid state. This is the thing. Custom used to do this. PV used to do this. If it was a 200 series amp like a K200 Custom, it's 100 watts. So you take whatever series it is and divide that by two and that gives you your wattage. But, I mean, this 215 cabinet seems perfect for it. It's got a big sound. This is plenty of volume. I like. Cool. Have a great day. And now, just because you didn't drink all your milk, we present the other thing I got at this auction, which will get going. I don't know if I'm going to get it going on camera or not, but it's the world's, it's pure evil. It's pure evil. It is an Ico Model 666. Dynamic conductive tube and transistor tester. Yay! Um, it actually works in a general sense now that I've cleaned some switches and I actually cleaned a lot of the schmoo off the front of it. But uh, there's still a couple of little issues that I might root through and get it going. But um, <clears throat> admittedly, I like my lazy one push button tester better for one push button testing. And with these ICOs, you need to get the updated manuals because these two Bowie charts, yeah, they're crap. <laughs> I found out that. Uh, the voltages and things that are listed on some of those, they won't damage anything, but they give you some pretty poopy readings where you'll get... Uh, if you follow the one that was on the early chart, it's like impossible to have a weak 12AX7. And I did kind of prove that with testing. But uh, anyway, yeah, we'll get the idea. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. See you soon.